A love of horse racing is one of the earliest imports. Clubs become new social centers where contacts are made. The close embrace of ballroom dancing provokes a protest movement. Blockbusters from Hollywood are released in cinemas here at the same time as in America. The pastimes enjoyed by people from around the world bring vitality to life in the city. In the autumn of 2012, a grand international polo tournament attracts teams from Hong Kong, England, the United States, and Argentina to Tianjin. Horses gallop as crowds gather. It's a scene similar to one witnessed over a century ago. In 1865, at the same location, a British embassy official described Tianjin as being in a state of extreme excitement on the last day of racing. Seven minutes and 40 seconds of hooves pounding over three miles. It's truly an amazing sport. Horse racing originates during the 12th century within England's royal family. It's honored as the sport of kings. As Tianjin opens up as a commercial port, the British introduce this sport to the city. In 1890, autumn rain flooded the racecourse near Haiguang Temple. The weather was unsettling because the most important horse race of the year was coming soon. This worried Gustav von Dietring, the chairman of the racing club. The annual race season in Tianjin coincided with the rainy season. Dietring was upset by the flooding and takes action. This dedicated horse racing fan started leveling the land laying hard surface race courses, and even built a race course in the back garden of his villa. This area of land covered about 13 hectares and was known as land of herds. A few years later, Dietring sold it to the race club Every year during race season, this place came alive. Even today, the shape of the old track determines the surrounding landscape. This road in the Five Avenues district has a special name, Racecourse Road. Older generations of people in Tianjin say the course was here before the district itself. recall fond memories of horse racing. The drumming sound of hooves remained fresh and vivid in their minds. This 
。我记得好像这个赛马场这一圈啊，大概有，当时是三千马。当时我看这个骑马的时候，特别有意思的是什么呢？他们基本是跪在这个马鞍子上，跪在马鞍上跑。他这个跑马呢，是按着这个逆时针的方向，上那边。你看这个河呢，就转着一大圈儿。Unlike foreign racehorses that meet particular requirements for certain blood lineage, the racehorses in Tianjin are strong Mongolian horses with a great ability to run. Jin Rongpei's father owned a racehorse. 我父亲有一个赛马，它名字叫大华星。然后呢，有赛马的人都给这赛马呢请一位骑师。那大华星的骑师呢，姓王，是我表妹的干爹，我们都管他叫王干爹。等到星期日比赛的时候呢，我爸爸就带我先上马厩，去先看看这个王干爹和大华星他们赛前的准备呀、啊，玩呗。然后等到比赛的时候呢，就上看台上去了，那挤哟。然后等一开枪就是出栏就跑出来的时候，其实我那时候。根本也找不着大华星和王干爹在什么地方，就跟着那些个、那些个人就一块嚷嚷加油啊，就 go go go。The stands become a centerpiece to display the latest fashion. Custom-made dresses, fine suits, and the traditional European designs and styles are everywhere. The atmosphere is that of a social gathering. Horse racing makes Tianjin a city full of vigor and vitality. In the archives of Columbia University, hallmarks of old Tianjin are stored. The two trophies are engraved with the words Paper Hunt Club. It's an unusual term. Paper hunting is a kind of horse racing fashionable in Tianjin. In winter, Ice on the river freezes commercial activity. To escape boredom, the people fold kites out of paper, and horse riders try to catch the kites flying through the air. The first person to catch a kite is the winner. Such an ingenious form of entertainment makes life interesting and elegant. Tianjin Country Club is completed in 1925 and stands next to the racecourse in the British Concession. On weekends, people come here to enjoy a bit of curling, play tennis, or have meals. Decades ago, socializing at clubs is all the rage in Tianjin. The club began in the 17th century in England. The club was in the club. The Albert is named after Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert, and is at 52 Victoria Street in London. Although very different in atmosphere and style from a gentleman's club, it still exudes the spirit of 19th century sociability.
A century ago, over 100 clubs with distinctive styles begin to appear in the concessions. Tianjin develops a very distinctive look. People from far and wide gather here. This place is like a second home to many of them. In 1912, American soldiers of the 15th U.S. Infantry Regiment arrive in Tianjin. Some will go on to play important roles in the history of Sino-U.S. relations. One soldier who will make a mark is George Marshall, Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army during World War II and the five-star general hailed by U.S. historians as the organizer of victory. Joseph Stilwell, a U.S. commander on the battlefield of Myanmar in World War II, is honored as a great friend of the Chinese people. The city witnessed the legends which turned soldiers into generals. Old military songs reverberated through this beautiful building. Many veterans choose not to return to their home country, but stayed out of a love for this city. These veterans have created their own military group, that is, the American military group. This military group, when you go in, you will find that the inside of the building and plans are completely the American味儿. In this military group, they have been killed by the soldiers. 还有雇的是医生，这个裁缝、理发匠，就是完全为这些老兵服务。呃，这些老兵呢，就是靠这种环境啊，他们在一起打牌、聊天、看美国报纸，呃，追忆自己在呃军中的生活呀，思念自己的家乡，来了补啊，在东方啊，就对美国家乡的一个思念。This old photo records a vivid moment. Boats move to and fro on the river. Among them is a distinctive one belonging to the boating club. Its members come to train on the river. The triumphant faces in the photo are still engraved in the minds of many who remember those times. The Russians used to row very short strokes, and the Germans used to row right back, right back, right back. And there was a big competition. And my father says, but I think all fathers say that, that the Germans always won the race. Wolf Haysloop's childhood home in Tianjin was in the German concession at what is now number 29 Fujian Road. All that remains is the grapevine his family planted along the wall. Present for her, he bought her a beautiful ring in Germany. Beautiful. Sixty years pass, and these children now have gray hair. In the autumn of 2013, they returned to Tianjin. When I was very much younger, when I was here, living here, um, it was home. Uh, I can't say anything more than that, it was home for us. Um, but now, as an older person coming back to Tianjin, it's totally amazing what they have built here in such a short time. But from, as I say, from my younger days, the impression is that it was home for us. In English, they say, Home is where your heart is. I used to enjoy the, the Chinese uh, people who sell things. Uh, they would sing a song, the Ch Chinese the sellers. Uh, they used to sell tang dors. Tang dors, a little apple. And as a little boy, I loved those apples. You know, on a stick, and the little apple with sugar on it. And I remember that. 
and other people, other Chinese would come along that they'd sharpen your knife. And they'd come to the house and they'd sing a song. They sing more Jin, the more Dao. Their colorful childhood gives the Heislu brothers a deep attachment to Tianjin. A hotel in the city is also of great significance for them. In the Astor Museum, there is a precious photo. It shows the founder of the hotel, George Ritter great-grandfather of the Hayslope brothers. In October 2013, the Hayslope family receives an invitation to attend the 150th anniversary of the hotel. The Astor Hotel is one of Tianjin's famous landmarks. It was started in the mid-19th century and became a symbol of power and opulence. In 1900, a Russian journalist listed some of its luxury features. He described it as a three-story hotel with balconies, side corridors, flowers, and plants. The rooms are large, the floor is well carpeted, the ceiling decorated with expensive chandeliers, and the beds mantled by gauze. There are rattan recliners on the balcony. The bathrooms have marble tiles. The bells and all kinds of equipment are ready when needed. The old menu in the Astor Museum lists some great wines and excellent dishes. For example, assorted bread that goes with creme de cacao, chicken braised in porcelain pots that goes with French red wine, and coffee with brandy. The preparation of meals is second to none. Chinese people begin to seek more in their daily lives. This desire and taste for the finer things in life gradually became a habit. The Tianjin Municipal Archive still preserve the memories of vintages long drunk away. The arrival of foreign delicacies opened the eyes of those Chinese lucky enough to enjoy themselves in a wider world. Chuyan is from a good family. Her maternal grandfather was once a vice minister of the northern government. Her grandfather was once a military governor. Fine food is an indispensable part of her life. Her taste is shown by the private menu she has written for her daughter. Among the more than 100 dishes, Kessling's European-style food accounts for a large percentage. Xu still remembers the first European meal she had as a girl. Decades ago, the noted Chinese writer Eileen Chang was also obsessed with the fine food of Kisling restaurant. 
Tianjing was an important part of her childhood memories before the age of eight. Years later, the tastes she remembered provide her with inspiration. She writes that in Shanghai, they live next to the Kisling Cafe, which is newly relocated from Tianjin during the war. Every morning, there is a pleasant aroma of bread and a fragrant smell drifting in the air. The delicate aroma is unforgettable. Kiesling originates in Dresden, Germany, the capital of the former kingdom of Saxony. It is famous for Kuch. The founder is Albert Kiesling, who learned baking techniques and dessert making in Dresden during his early years. After he arrives in Tianjin, he establishes restaurants in the French and German concessions. He uses a very Chinese name, Chi Lin. The world's finest ingredients are imported to Tianjin. Swiss chocolate, New Zealand butter, flour from Europe and the United States. These are used in all kinds of fabulous culinary creations displayed in the shop window. This method of making a rose with cream originates from a craft tradition from 100 years ago. At the time, Tianjin has many clubs and every festival becomes a reason for a celebration. Kiesling has the creative idea of custom-made cakes for different festivals. Inadvertently, it's a piece of cake which makes this city adopt new lifestyles. Time cannot erase the best memories. These days, Shuyan doesn't go out much. She's troubled by a leg injury. But on good days, she likes to come to here, take a seat beside the window, and order her favorite dish. The sunshine outside the window seems to take her back to her childhood. While European-style food enriches the Chinese diet, businessman Li Jianho is seeking a new business model. In 1927, he opens a restaurant called Fulalin in the French concession with some friends. In addition to combining Chinese and European cuisines, the restaurant also has a ballroom. Ballroom dancing brings people uncomfortably close to each other in the eyes of conservative Chinese. The dancers are charmed by the movements of jazz music. The ballroom makes the evenings of Tianjin seem even more romantic. However, something very disturbing awaits Li. The ballroom irritates some influential Chinese citizens. They agree that dancing is an offense against decency.
the ballroom is closed. The media starts to sensationalize it all, and a ban on dancing seems likely. The dance floor of the Fulanin restaurant is empty, but the one in the national restaurant in Tianjin is still brightly lit and crowded with people. Powerful people begin to exert even more pressure and get the government on their side. But the national restaurant refuses to abolish dancing, saying it's not violating any laws. The dramatic interruption to the city's nightlife continues. But then one night, the dance floor of the restaurant is suddenly lively again. The Takun Pao newspaper report on the following day treats the scene in a humorous way. Fulalin restaurant turns a blind eye to the protests of the powerful elite. Scenes of feasting and revelry return, and Tianjin is like a surreal land once again. The protests against dancing suddenly stop. A modern and free lifestyle is becoming a trend in the city. Novel and bold dance steps become the rhythm of the young. Jitaban是美国的水兵舞。那时候年轻啊，十几岁啊，尤其四五年以后呢，十几岁我们的有些个朋友嘛，也跟着一块儿上那舞厅里去，连看呢带跳，所以其中有的人呢就学会这个水
Contemporary life during that era in the city is deeply felt. Ding Xiaoping is a senior stage director at the Tianjin People's Art Theater. She's busy preparing for the show, The Thunderstorm. She pours over every detail to ensure the Zhou residence is faithfully replicated on stage. Every piece of furniture and ornament in the Zhou residence is typical of the houses of the rich and powerful families of Tianjin. While influenced by European culture, the city maintains its eastern flavor. The noblemen, celebrities, and rich businessmen here possess experience and good taste. In Tianjin, elements of east and west, of stateliness and elegance, converge and complement one another. Whatever styles are present in the well-preserved buildings in the Five Avenues district, they all have one thing in common, the family room fireplace. The Europeans need it to stay warm in winter. Central heating now warms the homes, yet fireplaces are a symbol of European culture in a bygone era. In residences of the district, the fireplace is a highlight of the interior. In public buildings, they are in the foreground. The exquisitely made marble fireplace in this German club reflects the uncommon glamour of this extravagant building. The house of every family in the district has several fireplaces of various styles. They are all perfectly placed in the center of their living rooms. Zhang Ling's family lives in one such residence. The fireplace is a symbol of a comfortable life. It manifests the openness and freedom of the city. C'est une ville beaucoup plus libre en réalité. Et les, les Chinois qui avaient l'argent ont imité les étrangers parce qu'ils étaient invités assez souvent dans les, pour les relations d'affaires dans les maisons étrangères. Et ils voyaient que c'était agréable d'avoir un bon canapé pour s'asseoir plutôt que d'être sur une chaise Ming en bois, <rire> en dur. Bon. Euh, et que l'hiver, c'était agréable d'avoir une cheminée ou un poêle pour se chauffer. Over time, the city displays more than just elegant European influences. The residents of the Five Avenues district adopt elements of other cultures. Jin Wong Pei's family is a typical one in the Five Avenues district. 
Her parents pass away many years ago, and she keeps their memory alive with photos in the living room. Her father, Jin Shanjai, is the founder of oncology in China. Her mother is a top student of Yancheng University. More than 70 years ago, her parents planned a Christmas wedding. Christmas Eve was the Jin family's grandest festival. Piano, ballet, and English lessons fill Jean's childhood. My 他就一本精装的白雪公主的英文故事书 Again,他在那洗头卷头呢,这老师。然后他就告诉,再来一次,again。我就还是canal,也许为这个一个字儿,就折腾个十分钟。然后他才过来告诉,no, K doesn't pronounce, no, 几辈子。she now passes her memories to her granddaughter, just as she has been an example to one generation after another. Holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. The feeling of seeing the unknown world for the first time still lingers. In an age of rapid changes, the past is never far away. The cinema changes people's inherent way of seeing and watching. When we observe another kind of life for the first time on the screen, everything changes. Eighty-five-year-old Li Guangxi is a famous Chinese tenor. He still remembers the effect of watching the movie Gone with the Wind. 一九四零年演的时候，我在天津看过的，那打开了人生的境界，有这么美丽的故事，这么好看的，因为当时世界上只有一个国家电影是最发达，就是美国好莱坞，打遍天下无敌手，所以那时候我就见着，给自己打开
up a dance and my reputation will be lost forever. There's enough courage you can do without a reputation. Oh, you do talk scandalous. Kiss me. Movie theaters in Tianjin quickly obtained the most prestigious films from Hollywood studios like Paramount, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, Warner Brothers, and 20th Century Fox. Three movie theaters even got the first-run right of films. What is called the first is the best or the the is 他演了一定时期以后，然后呢，第二轮电影再开始演，啊，都演的差时间很长了，然后呢，第三轮才开始演，这样他的票价上就有很大的区别。那时候投了电影院，像平安电影院，啊，就是楼上始终是两块钱。
Tianjin was a place that gathered people from all over the world. Even if they left, they took away deeply cherished memories. I think Tianjin was a really exciting place to be at that time. Um, I mean, there's some beautiful architecture, modern apartment buildings, um, sort of quaint, semi-attached single-family homes, grand villas. Um, so you can imagine living in one of those places, um, then stepping out your door and walking to um, Kiesling Bakery uh, for some German treats. Um, maybe some coffee, maybe a, a Coca-Cola, right, a new drink. Um, then perhaps in the evening you might go to a party at the Astor Hotel where, where you'll see, uh, you know, Zhang Shui Liang and all these sort of famous celebrities of China. You know, Charlie Chaplin, I believe, stayed there. Um, you might go to the cinema. Um, you might go looking in some of the department stores in the French concession. Um, so for people who could afford leisure, um, for people who had access to modern knowledge, um, this was a really wonderful time. A golden era or perhaps a period of history that passes all too soon. The inspiration and creation of China's first university is revealed in a test paper. A book about how nature selects winners and losers is a sensation across the country. A newspaper begins to call for changes in society. The thinking of a nation begins to transform and an era of enlightenment begins.